Alright. You know who it is. It's the man of the hour. Whatever. But uh, this is an After Effects tutorial on Element V2. If you don't have V2, or well, Element V2, I'll put a link in the description on how to get it and whatnot. Um, but yeah, this is just a little effect. We'll show, I'll show you right here. So, as you can see, this is like an intro kind of like deal. It's pretty shitty, whatever. But uh, the text isn't straight. It's like kind of like bent around the planet. Like uh, only th the only idea I can give you is like the Paramount uh, intro for like movies and shit. Like the text bends around the Earth. This is kind of like what I went for. But uh, as you can see, I'm trash as fuck. But you know, whatever. But I'm gonna show you how to do it. Um, so first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get a cinematic. What the fuck are those yellow lines? The wrong size. All right, so we're gonna just delete this bucket. But um, first you're gonna get a cinematic, and you're gonna right click on it. Well, fuck, goddamn. We're gonna duplicate it. Drag that one down. Name it environment. And this is gonna be like kind of like our um. I want like, I would call it a um. It's gonna be like a thing used to composite your 3D text into this cinematic. So what you're gonna do is I like to find a spot that's got like a lot of different like the most colors in it, I guess. And you're gonna right click on it, go to time, and enable freeze frame. So that's all done. You don't need to worry about that layer pretty much at all. Then you're gonna right click on track camera. So that's gonna start like analyzing the background, obviously. And what you're gonna want to do after this is what I, this is what I do while this is going, so I save time. I hit control Y, or you can right click create new solid. I name it element and um, yeah you make sure it's the size of your composition and you make sure it's a black one I don't know if it'll work on other colors but it might who fucking knows um, you create it go over to your effects and presets and shit type in element so mind you again this is element v2 so you might not have the same version I don't know if you can do this on element v1 I honestly couldn't tell you but you may be able to, I don't know. But if this does work, uh, somebody tell me, and then then we'll be good and everybody will know. So you're going to drag your Element V2 on. Um, and since this is still going and has a, f a few seconds, we can burn some time, I guess. We're just going to close that because we don't need that yet. And these are some tools that I use to composite my 3D footage into composition. Um, the first effect I go and grab is Color Matcher. Um, this effect is in a preset. It's not in a preset, but a plugin and it's used for compositing 3d footage so I'll put I'll probably put a file in the description we'll see um, so you can get it and then you go and grab a fast blur um, the blur it's kind of used to blend because like the element will come out sharper than the actual footage itself so to like kind of counteract it we make 3d a little bit blurrier so you get like it just looks cleaner in my opinion I don't know like I don't know if it actually does look better but in my opinion it just looks better. okay so this tracking is done what you're gonna want to do is honestly this part doesn't even fucking matter people say it matters but I don't really see the fucking point so you go on to your track 3d manager and you'll get these circles and dots and shit hopefully you know how to do this I would hope but for the people who don't I'll teach you a little bit and you got your three points just find an area whatever flat space yes and you create a texting camera and on that texting camera I usually like to drag my own of all three of them you put like I don't know um, tutorial hopefully I spelled that right don't want to seem dumb as fuck alright so now that's all done all these layers are here and you're gonna go to your element and in your element you're gonna go to um, element click down on this you're gonna go all the way down to custom layers and custom text and mask. This is where you're gonna click on your text, or if you um, mask out a 2D um, logo or something like that, you can click on that too. So we're gonna click on our text layer, it's called tutorial, and we're gonna close that and we're gonna go to custom texture maps and we're gonna click on this and go to track. Um, so we're all done with that and we're gonna go to scene setup. So in scene setup, you drag this out but in the scene setup what you're going to do is like this is your whole setup you 
click on this and see your environment. Right now that doesn't matter. But what you're gonna want to do is click extrude. So we have our we have our text. Looks pretty basic. And usually this looks really fucking ugly in my opinion. So I usually like to go here and extrude it. And what extruding does is it like makes the text deeper, like it gives it some length. So if you go from one, it gets really thin. Go to ten and it's thicker. So that's just what that does. Honestly, I don't really change this that much. Um in reflection what it is. Yeah, and reflectivity I give it like a twenty seven ish. So it gives it a little bit I think it gives it a little bit deeper shadows in like the spaces like in between cars. Um but really that's all we gotta do. Um, that's zero. But um that's pretty much all we're gonna do right there. Oh, something I usually like to do is I like to go to the bevel, go down to um bevel backside, and it just cleans up the back of the it makes it actually like match the front and it looks it doesn't look so shit. So we're all done with that. And I usually like to go to environment and you get all these like you can like load in your own environment. But I usually like to go to my custom layer and see it it automatically changed it. Kind of gave it a blue shade to it. So you can kind of preview it in after uh, in element. That's pretty helpful. And now that we're done with that, we can go to got a scene setup. Go to group one. This is where your this is where the tutorial text is located when you want to modify it. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna find it wherever the fuck it is. Probably like there it there it is. Usually you can just drag your Z your Z position, find it. So what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna drag it all the way back. So it's usually like up against the glass. Um, we just kind of want to get it as possible that's pretty damn close and see if you look at it we're gonna drag this a little bit sorry it doesn't look it doesn't look right it just kind of looks fucking shitty actually that's where that's what just that's what we're gonna say it looks really shitty because it's it's on a cylinder shape and it's flat and it's boring so what you're going to want to do is you're going to stay in your group one um, and go to particle look. So in particle look, there's all these options to increase the size. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for deform. And in this deform tab, you can do tapers, twist, blends, noise, deform, offsets, and reset. Um, what we're going to want to do, because we are bending the shape to fit the cylinder shape, we're going to want to go to bend. If you enable that, you can change the X, Y, and Z values. and Bend angles. See, if I bend it on the x angle, on the x axis, it'll bend it from the sides. So that's not really what we're looking for. So we're going to want to set it to the y's. I'm pretty sure. Oh, fucking wrong. I'm, I'm a terrible editor. That's, that's what. Oh, that's not what it is. So you're going to want to change your fucking A. You're going to want to change the bend direction. I think it's 90 degrees. I may be wrong. That way it bends forward and backwards. Oh. Holy shit, dude. You fucked it up. What's good, bitch? Wait, what? Oh, it was the X. Never mind. My bad. I'm a terrible editor. So we are going to want 90 degrees. And the, as you start to bend it, I'm sorry about that. That was a long wait. As you start to bend it, it'll start to fit the background. See, now that you have it set to like bend, I think this needs to be brought back in the Z position but um as you can see it kind of bends around the cylinder so it kind of fits it a little bit better maybe if I bring it forward a little bit there we go that looks so much better so as you can see when I bent it it kind of just fitted around the cylinder a lot cleaner than like it would it just looks a lot better overall than just having straight boring ass position that everything always has and there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this like um if you have like an open cinematic where it's just a scenery you can um model it around a logo make it look really fucking cool but i usually like to go to multi-object enable it set my 
but you have all these rotations. I usually set this one, which is random rotation pretty much. I usually like to set it to 12. So it kind of gives like every little a little bit different rotation so it's not just uniform. And just really boring and ugly. So we're done with that. And the last thing I'm going to show you guys before we're done here, well, there's two more things I have to show you. Is first, I go to back to my element where you can see all the tabs. I go to my render settings, physical environment. Then you go to the freeze framed um, video clip that you selected or that we did earlier in the tutorial. Click it and it'll give it more, it'll, it'll make it fit a little bit better. Then I usually go to lighting. And honestly, this one's all up to you because this is like your cinematic and whatever light looks the best. So you have all these light settings and it just it just changes the way the scene looks but yeah you can just go through all of these um the one i really like the most is um dramatic cinema um product i think it is no not product um single light clean blue i really don't use all of them to be honest that one looks okay but that has to be like used like if you're like doing like a uh, wrap edit or something like that because I think that the basic white font or text looks really good overall. Um, the natural one actually looks really good on this. It brings out the front and uh, highlights the backs or the beveled part of it. Um, and so we're done with the lighting. The lighting's all up to you. It doesn't matter what you do, just as long as it fits the fits the edit you're doing, I guess. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go to ambient occlusion. We're gonna click enable AO. This will start to add like shadows and depth to of your letters it'll just give it a different feel usually the settings I go for is 10 um, on the SSAO intensity and on the SSAO samples I go 64 and the radius I go 10 and the distribution I go 10 so I mean these are all up to you it doesn't look like it did much but when it starts moving it'll look like it did a lot more than what you originally thought um and for that I mean that's pretty much all I really have for you like and I mean a lot of people do like um, masking to like add depth of field to their clips but I mean I found the easiest way is just to mess with your camera so I mean if you want to add depth of field to your um to your edit you just go to camera options depth of field toggle it on one up but that's that I'll do that for another tutorial because that'll take like a really long time to do and so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna adjust these two effects that we added earlier the first one is color matcher and in this one you have the target layer that you're gonna want to set to your track so see it automatically changed the color of it but I feel that's really really strong and it needs to be toned down a bit see if you you jack it all the way up it'll fit like right with the composition which looks really really weird so I usually like to set it to like 35 ish I think it still gives it a nice hint like a nice little tint to it um, and then you can blend it with the original which just pretty much means that you can reset it all the way to where it looks you can just adjust it so where it looks perfect I guess and on my fast blur because I did say that this is a 3d an exported 3d um, extrusion I guess you can call it it does look a little bit sharper than the actual cinematic itself so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to blur it but you don't want to blur it too high like put a 5 on it see because then you get it like really blurry and you can't even like like it just doesn't fit so you just want like a little subtle blur so you put it to like 0 0.3 so it does it is there but it's just not very noticeable and it just kind of gives it a little bit more cleaner look um but yeah that's pretty much all i have for you guys today on this tutorial um if you guys have any questions, leave a comment in the description. If I if I did a really shitty job, tell me what I can improve on because this is my first tutorial. Um, but yeah, this is your boy. Um, I'm out.